Hey guys, so I want to take a minute to talk to you guys about bailing out of the vehicle. Now, we talked about this before the very first lesson. If the vehicle is operable, we want to stay in the vehicle. One of the key components that we need in order to stay effective in the fight is the ability for mobility. If the vehicle is operable, that's where your mobility comes from. If the vehicle is inoperable, your being encased in this essentially cube is going to make you non-mobile, which is going to give your opponent on the outside an advantage. So what we want to do is we want to get out of the vehicle when it's become in inoperable. We want to stay in the vehicle if it's operable. So from here, as I'm sitting in this position, we've talked about how to basically draw from around our seatbelt. We've talked about people trying to approach our vehicle. We've talked about how to get over onto the other side and be able to engage from there. We've talked about all of these different things, moving in and around the vehicle. One of the things that we wanna get into as well is how to bail out of the vehicle. So as we're here, I go ahead and I set my seatbelt up and I go ahead and stage my shirt the same way that we did. Now we talked about this in the very first lesson where we talked about how to not take your belt and put it behind your gun. And this is the reason why, because when I go to bail out of this vehicle, it's gonna snatch my gun and rip it right out of the holster and fling me right back into the side of the vehicle. So when I'm sitting here, I'm gonna just leave this door open so you guys can see what I'm doing. As I'm sitting here, whether it be that I'm running and I crash and the vehicle becomes inoperable or whether it be a situation where I'm already stopped and the vehicle is off and I can't start the vehicle in time to be able to get out of there, I'm gonna bail out of this vehicle. So as I'm here, I'm looking to come back and hit the release on my seatbelt at the same time I'm accessing my door. Everything that we do is all about doing things efficiently. So as I'm here, I'm grabbing that door handle and I'm hitting the release on my seatbelt. As I do this, the tendency for most people is to reach across here and to get out of the seatbelt before you start moving. That is gonna be a very inefficient way of doing things. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna allow my body to unroll this seatbelt for me as I take off to the rear. So as I'm here, I grab that door handle and I'm gonna open with this side and I'm hitting this button. Now, as I'm here, all that's gonna happen is, is I'm gonna take that left leg and I'm gonna drop out and you're gonna see that my shoulder rolls over the top of the door here. As I drop out, I'm setting out here and then I'm turning and I'm starting to walk away. As I do, I'm just gonna allow my arm to drop back behind me and that's gonna help me to get out of that seatbelt. So once again, looking at it from this angle, I'm grabbing that door handle, I'm pushing that door open. I'm gonna grab and I'm gonna hit the button on my seatbelt. And as I do, I'm dropping out at the same time. I'm dropping my shoulder over and I'm looking to get my posture down as low as possible. This is assuming that I'm running from something in the front here, but as I'm here, I'm dropping out. Now, I want you to notice that my arm is still caught up in the seatbelt. All that I'm gonna do is that as I turned, my arm just drops back behind me and then I start taking off in this direction. And that keeps me from getting hung up in that seatbelt. So one more time. We're sitting here. I open that door, push open, drop out, arm goes back and I start running. Now this also allows me an opportunity to start clearing and drawing. One of the things that we've talked about in our in our fighting is that I need to have this arm for defensive measures to be able to defend whatever incoming blows are coming in. So I need to have a single hand clear. Now, when we add this in, I want you to see how it all starts to work. Open the door, drop out. As I'm here, I'm already starting to clear, arm drops back. Now I can start grabbing a hole and start engaging out to the front or whatever the situation calls for. The point being is, is this, this hand is going to be inoperable. If I try to bring my hands forward to clear here to be able to access my pistol, that seatbelt is going to grab my shoulder. That seatbelt is going to grab my shoulder and is going to fling me right back in to the side of the vehicle again. And I've seen this happen numerous times. So I want to make sure that when I do this, I'm doing a single hand clear to get that left hand down and out of the way, get my right hand up to get on the pistol, and then I can either turn and reorient it once I get back to the safety of the rear of the vehicle, whatever the situation calls for. The point being is, is that I'm not going to be able to use this hand to do a two hand clear and draw. I'm going to have to do a single hand clear, 
which means this hand is going to drop back so i drop out of the seat belt single hand clear go to the back of the vehicle where you can kind of get some sort of cover and concealment and then you can engage out the front door whatever direction that threat is coming from so as we're here one more time And then I can clear and access my pistol, all just basically combining basic tasks that we already train and we already know. Now we're adding in the aspect of moving in and around a vehicle and bailing out of the vehicle to that task. Don't underestimate some of the difficulty of combining simple tasks together. It, it starts to become a whole complex thing when you start taking simple things that you can train individually and combining them into an environment where you're having to do them all together in proper context. So you need to train this, you need to practice it and get good at it, all right? Train hard.